sentenced there to 18 years with 511 days served. Uh, Camille Mobley was set, stolen from a Florida hospital when she was just a few hours old, literally taken out of her mother's arms by Williams, who disguised herself as a nurse. Well, last month, Kamaya's birth mother broke down while giving an impact statement, recounting the moments she realized her daughter had been abducted. Joey Jackson, uh, criminal defense attorney, staying with us here, and HLN legal analyst, uh, Robbie Ludwig, psychotherapist, with us as well. Thank you both so much. Uh, I know that this is, this is a tough one. Robbie, there is no doubt that that victim impact statement, it, it hit you. Yeah. How, how effective, how, how much do you think that played into the end game here? Well, I'm sure it was a huge factor because this birth mother was robbed of the right to raise a daughter that she wanted, that she wanted to love, that she didn't have a choice about because that choice was taken away from her. And there are still repercussions from this daughter being abducted because the relationship between the birth mother and birth daughter is not completely right as far as we know. Having said that, I think this sentence seems like more of a deterrent, right? Because some people can say 10 years, maybe it's worth the risk. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear 18 years, I think that that's a much scarier sentence. So I agree with Joey that there are no winners here. And this is just unfortunate all the way around. But I'm inclined to say I'd like to see this woman rehabilitated in some way and maybe work with a therapist, a family therapist who can work with the birth mother and somehow making this a more healed situation. I don't know how that would happen, but I kind of like that idea. Horrific instance, horrific thing to deal with. And I just don't know. And I guess Dr. Robbie would, uh, we'd lean on you for this because, yeah. you know, from an emotional place, how the heck do you get mm -hmm. over that? I, I just... You? I mean, I would like to see both mothers, right, one is behind bars, somehow collaborate together for the benefit of the child so that these two mothers are working together so that the child has somehow permission to love both mothers. But, Robin, I have to ask you, when you hear that impact statement from that mm -hmm. mother, how realistic is it? How plausible that these well, two women could actually work together for the sake of this child, who is it's really no like longer a child anymore. She's a young no, woman. I agree, but it's almost like co-parenting, right? And um, it's amazing what two people who divorce, who really dislike each other, what they can do for the love of a child. So it's just one idea I have so that it would encourage the rebellion of Kamaya to not shut out the birth mother. And so my concern was always that Kamaya would be angry with her birth mother and that would push her to have more of a relationship with the mother that she's known her whole entire life. But if they work together, and find somehow a common ground, anything's possible, I think that would be the most healing solution. Mm. All right, Joey and Robbie, thank you so much for your perspectives. Thank you, Christy. Thank Good you. Good to see you, Dr. Robbie. Psychotherapist uh, back with us, Robbie Ludwig. Robbie, so grateful that you stuck around for this. So obviously these, this is a very public uh, situation that yeah. at the end of the day is also very private. Is there a better way to balance all of this? Oh, gosh. I think Melania Trump did a beautiful job of taking back her voice and making it clear that nobody speaks for her. And that really helps her to really create a private moment for herself to figure out what she wants to do, how she wants to proceed, and how she wants to feel about it. It's very hard when you are in the public eye. And there are situations that come up that can be experienced as very humiliating and that you might not want to share with everybody on the planet in this case, everyone around the world, you almost have to take back your voice and create those boundaries so that you can make sense of the situation yourself. So I think what Melania did was great. And really, she's helping herself basically create those boundaries and making it clear that she has not spoken to the situation. Mm -hmm. So therefore, nobody can assume what she thinks or feels. So here's the thing. You know, a lot of people, this is what we know. We have control of ourselves. We don't have control of anybody else. Is right. there anything that you can do when somebody oversteps their boundaries in your life? 
Yeah, I think you simply tell them that it, it's not okay and you can do it in a kind way. So you can simply say, I speak for myself. I don't want anyone speaking for me. And when I'm ready to come out and discuss any topic, you will hear from me or I will be the first person mm -hmm. to let that be known. So it's basically setting boundaries and being very direct because with certain people, they don't intuit that that boundary, so you need to be more direct about so, it. So, Robbie, what do you make of his response that, uh, but I believe it? Well, that's great. It's great that Rudy Giuliani believes what he says and that the president supports him. So it means that in his mind, he is doing a good job. But having said that, believing something and it being accurate and truth are two very different concepts. Well, that's kind of what I wondered because there are, they, look, this is a very public situation, but there are a lot of people who have, you know, a, a hard time trying to set those boundaries and making sure those boundaries stick because you cannot control what somebody else does. So right, you're saying right. the best way to deal with that is just deal with it head on. Uh, yes. And, and if they keep going, there's nothing else you can do but put your truth out there. You you just let it be known your truth and that the other person's not speaking for you and, and hope that that resonates in a very powerful way. All righty. Robbie Ludwig, thank you.